I got to try out the world's first desktop PC that uses a RISC-V processor, and it's left me wanting for more. In case you don't know what RISC-V is, it's an open standard architecture that seeks to compete directly with the x86 architecture made by Intel and AMD, as well as the ARM architecture developed by ARM, and then licensed to companies like Apple, Qualcomm, and Ampere. So you might be wondering what the difference is between open standard and open source, since they sound pretty similar. In an open standard architecture, as opposed to an open source architecture, only the core RISC-V architecture, the macro architecture is open source. And the RISC-V architecture out of the box is very bare bones, so if a company wants its RISC-V processor to do anything more than adding and subtracting, it's going to need to develop those features or license them from another company on their own, and those extra features are not open source. What that means is that when a company like sci 5 makes a RISC-V processor, and they have done so many, many times, uh, no other company can just take that processor for free and make it for themselves. Uh, they would need a license to do that, that is permission from sci 5 However, that sci 5 chip is compatible with the standards set by the RISC-V Foundation, and it can run any code that's made to be run on a RISC-V CPU, much like how code meant for an x86 CPU can run on both Intel and AMD, and throughout uh, multiple generations, even if it's not explicitly made for like, say like the latest Meteor Lake or Lunar Lake or Zen 5 chips or what have you. There's been a lot of confusion about open standard versus open source lately because RISC V kind of rebranded themselves uh, last year. So I'm hoping this clears up any confusion that you may have now or someone from the future watching this. Yeah, RISC V is open standard, not open source. Now RISC V is really, really new. It was just launched in 2014, nearly 11 years ago. And by contrast, the x86 architecture first came out in the 70s and ARM came out in the 80s. So RISC V, in order to catch up to its competitors, has to speed run several decades of semiconductor development in a very short amount of time. RISC-V is already getting used in relatively low power and simple implementations, such as for microcontrollers, and sometimes you might find RISC-V cores being auxiliary cores next to bigger, more capable ARM cores. But RISC-V processor designers have always had greater ambitions. They want to break into the data center, they want to break into smartphones, and of course, they want to break into PCs, which is why this computer is really special. This is the Deep Computing RISC-V mainboard PC, which features a Star 5 JH7110 CPU with four cores and integrated graphics made by Imagination, alongside eight gigabytes of memory and 64 gigabytes of eMMC storage. As far as I know, this is the first fully assembled RISC-V desktop PC to make it to market. There are actually many ITX motherboards with RISC-V CPUs, but I'm not aware of any pre-built based on those parts. Now, if you're thinking this desktop looks a lot like a laptop motherboard put inside a similarly shaped case, you'd be right. This is actually the same deep computing motherboard that's available for the framework laptop. What's interesting about being based on the framework laptop is that this PC gets modular ports, so you can swap them around or buy different ports to replace what the main board already comes with, which are two USB Type-C ports, a USB Type-A port, and an HDMI port. Now, you might be thinking whether this really counts as the first RISC-V desktop when it's literally just a, a laptop motherboard put inside a case that is well designed to fit it. And I think it's somewhat fair to say that, well, maybe this isn't a true desktop. But if it's not a desktop, then what is it? I mean, it's not portable, sure. I mean, it's it's based on laptop hardware, but there's no screen, there's no keyboard. It, you need a power source. You, you don't have a battery in this thing. So, I mean, if it's meant to be on a desk, it's stationary, it, it's not portable at all, then I would say this counts as a desktop, even if it's not you know, the thing that you think of first when you hear the word desktop. That being said, I do think it'll be pretty big news when we see a pre-built desktop using a RISC-V processor that's more in the vein of a pre-build that you'd get from Corsair or HP. Anyways, hardware is only half the story when it comes to RISC-V, so let's talk about software. Software support for RISC-V processors is, as you'd expect with any new architecture, uh, pretty meager at the moment. Unsurprisingly, Windows doesn't support the RISC-V architecture at all, but Linux does, and in particular, the Ubuntu distribution has quite a bit of support for RISC-V because its developer, Canonical, is heavily invested in RISC-V. Canonical also has a partnership with Deep Computing, which is probably why the mainboard PC is loaded with a tweaked version of Ubuntu. But even though Linux as an operating system supports RISC-V hardware, that doesn't mean the wider Linux software ecosystem does. There's actually so little software support for RISC-V processors that it was a pretty big deal when in 2021, the Mozilla Firefox browser was able to run on a RISC-V PC for the first time. And of course that was on Linux because Linux is pretty much the only operating system out there that has any decent support for RISC-V. Now, not having software support for almost anything would be a pretty big problem for deep computing if their target audience was the average consumer, but it's not. This PC is actually meant for RISC-V developers and enthusiasts so that they can actually have a piece of hardware they can experiment with. 
The RIS-5 industry has made great strides in respect to hardware, but I feel like their capabilities when it comes to software aren't fully realized yet. I think they're lagging behind what they are truly capable of. Now, thankfully, the availability of the mainboard PC should help with that because it's nice when developers have actual hardware that they can write software for, but Deep Computing and Framework haven't quite agreed on what they should sell this thing for. Early adopter pricing for the mainboard PC was $150 each, so I think that indicates that this thing will be pretty cheap when it fully comes out, but if I'm being honest, I have pretty much no idea. Uh, if I had to guess, I would say, hopefully this thing isn't more than $300. If it's less than $300, I think that'll be a really good sign. But then again, uh, Deep Computing does have to make money on this thing, uh, unless they wanna go bankrupt, so it's kind of hard to say one way or another. Anyways, I've been delaying this long enough. I'm sure you wanna see what it looks like to use this thing as like an actual PC, so uh, have a look. To get the mainboard computer hooked up, I just plugged it into my Razer USB 4 dock, which worked after I swapped one of the USB Type-C ports into the correct slot, so I got both of my monitors and other peripherals working. Now, this computer took ages to boot, and to me it seems there's no rhyme or reason as to how long it takes. Some boots took around a minute, some took several. I assume this is largely due to the OS being on an SD card, but the CPU is also pretty slow and only goes up to 600 megahertz. Once it finally loaded into Ubuntu, I was able to sign in pretty easily and look around the desktop. However, the PC only supports a single display out, so both of my monitors were mirrored. When I pressed the Windows key to access the activities overview, I noticed that even this caused visible lag. And after navigating to the app section, I realized that there was very little software here. Aside from the normal Linux system apps, the only other programs on here were LibreOffice and some photo and video software. My first instinct was to install Firefox because I had heard a while back that they finally got it running on RISC-V hardware, but all of my efforts to get it working resulted in errors, hours of frustration, and a pretty bad headache. This really confused me because I had seen news about Firefox and RISC-V as early as 2021, but when I went back to see if I had misremembered this somehow, I found that Firefox has only been demonstrated on Open Euler, another Linux distro. As far as I know, Firefox doesn't have a RISC-V version available for Ubuntu, which was a problem because that means there's no mainstream browser out there that I could use. There's probably some browser out there somewhere that will run on this PC, but I couldn't find it after a cursory search. Of course, there was internet access. I could access the internet via the console, but without an internet browser, there wasn't really a ton to do. It would have been nice to check out browsing the internet on the mainboard PC, but I'm not sure if I was missing out on much, judging by how things looked in LibreOffice. Things were laggy here too, even though it's just word processing and calculation tables. And that camera app barely worked at all. It was able to launch and show a single frame of my camera, but after that point, immediately crashed and became unresponsive. I also tried screen recording, a feature that's pretty easy to access in Ubuntu, and it worked just fine as far as I could tell, even if it was a laggy experience. However, when I tried to play back my recording, it didn't work because the PC just couldn't play MP4 files. Clearly, RISC-V PCs aren't ready for the average computer buyer. Heck, they're not even really ready for computer enthusiasts like me who love the hardware but aren't so keen on coding. But that's not really what deep computing is promising. What they're promising is a computer for RISC-V developers and enthusiasts, and that's exactly what this is. Although I was disappointed that I couldn't even browse the internet on the mainboard PC, I'm still very impressed that this thing exists. Uh, it looks great, it is cleverly designed, it's beautiful, and hopefully it'll be pretty affordable too. But even more than that, this PC represents a lot of milestones that the RISC-V architecture and the industry around it have now achieved. Firstly, there were a lot of companies involved in the making of the mainboard PC. Framework and deep computing obviously because, well, they literally made it. There's also Canonical and Cooler Master, two companies that are very much entrenched in the computer industry. I think Cooler Master is particularly interesting to me because they don't really have a horse in the RISC-V race. They don't really win or lose whether or not RISC-V succeeds, but they made this case anyways, and I think that's pretty cool. Now, any company could have made this chassis, but it's high quality and purpose-built, which I think is important. And also, Cooler Master now has an established relationship with the RISC-V PC industry, which in the long run could really matter. Additionally, this PC is just one step and Deep Computing's wider roadmap. A few weeks ago, I had the chance to sit down and talk to their CEO, Yunning Liang, and he's already looking forward to replacing this PC with something much more powerful. He told me that a faster version of the mainboard PC would be announced in March, followed by mass production in May, which also implies that the launch would either be May or at least a little bit after that. Though that being said, I don't know if we'll have some kind of early adopter situation like we saw with the original mainboard PC. The newer model will have an 8-core CPU with 50 tops of AI performance, about 50 times more fast than what this has, and it will also have 64 gigabytes of memory, about eight times what this has. I didn't get any info about pricing on this faster version of the mainboard PC, 
PC, but if I had to guess, it's probably going to be significantly more expensive. I mean, it has double the cores, much faster AI performance, uh, eight times the memory. That's going to be more expensive. It could be 300, it could be 500, who knows. And one last thing about milestones, I think it's pretty important that this thing is here. It's affordable, probably, and it's being produced in mass quantities. I mean, this isn't something that's like, a lab instrument, it's not experimental, it's a real product for real people, and it's here. And I think that's a really important milestone to have achieved. Like, RISC-5 will know it's made it when launching a new computer is just a normal everyday occurrence, just like it is for ARM and x86. In the here and now though, the mainboard PC seems like a pretty great entry level option for RISC-5 developers and enthusiasts. The only real issue this thing has is that it's slow, but I mean, it's a RISC-5 computer, and also there's a faster version around the corner, you just have to wait. Anyways, that's all I have to say about Deep Computing's mainboard PC. If you enjoyed our analysis, then please like the video, comment, subscribe, and click the bell icon to get notified the next time we upload. If you really like what we do here and want to support us more, then please consider donating to our Patreon, a link is in the description. We do this for free so far. It would be nice to have a little bit of income to keep the lights on, please. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.